So being a content creator right now is pretty interesting to say the least. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm in my closet. We're going to be doing something different, a bit more of a chatty get ready with me in today's video, which I actually haven't done in so long. Not because I don't want to do those videos. I just, it gets pushed aside in my brain and it just doesn't happen. So today I thought it'd be a perfect time because I'm in this slump and I just feel like we need to have a chatty video. That's about it. I'm just experimenting with content, trying to figure out what kind of content I want to post in the future, what kind of content you like to see from me. As always, feel free to leave all your thoughts in the comments below. I don't know where to look. I'm like not a phone vlogger. I think I'm supposed to look at the camera. Um, but yeah, I'm in my closet as well. By the way, if you don't already know, I have a Poshmark. I have tons of stuff in my Poshmark. Almost everything is in like pristine, really good condition or new, just things that I didn't end up wearing or don't fit me anymore, or I just didn't feel like suit me and they're going to be passed on. So I will link my Poshmark in the description below, tons of stuff on there if you're interested, but I will see you in the next clip. Right before I was about to start filming this, we got some mail, so I thought I would share it with you. First is my Sephora order I just placed the other day. First for my samples, I got the Ellis Brooklyn Apre, Apres, someone correct me in the comments. This is a, the notes are the crispness of evergreens, the dewy scent of fresh snow, and the warm allure of bourbon and praline. That sounds really good. This smells really good, but you know what it reminds me of? It smells very similar to replicas by the fireplace. Like almost the exact same. I'll have to compare them. Um, also, I react to almost every fragrance, so I always test them though just to see. Some like more natural brands I'm okay with, um, like Pacifica Roll-On perfumes are good with me. So we'll see about this, but it does smell really good. And then I also got the Summer Friday CC Me Serum. I think this is just a vitamin C serum. I might just throw this in like a giveaway or for like a travel day or something. And then I decided to pick up the RMS foundation. Yes, I already had this, but I picked up a new shade. I picked up the lightest shade because it seemed like it had the best undertone, even though there's no description. I sort of tried to investigate with like the reviews and just looking at the pictures. So let's open this up. You can't even see it. Let's open it up and see what the shade's like. Actually, before we do that, I have a clothing purchase here. <laughs> this thing is massive from Oisho. I have never ordered from this brand before. I think I found the brand on a capsule wardrobe channel. I forget the name of the channel. I will try to think of it. But anyway, I ordered a linen wrap skirt. I know it's like the end of summer, but I just like wear skirts constantly in the summer and I just really wanted a nice linen one. You probably won't be able to see on camera what it looks like but I will pop in a picture. I got the white shade because it was on my wish list for a while and then it went on sale, so I went ahead and grabbed it. So you'll be seeing the picture now. It's this really pretty wrap style with like uh, almost tulip hem to it. It's super flattering on wrap skirts if you haven't tried them. They're just the most flattering for any body type. Seriously, try them out. And I want a linen one, it's lightweight. This one is definitely see-through, which I expected with white linen, it usually is, but I will wear nude underwear. And then I also have nude shorts that I wear under all of my skirts anyway, just for thigh chafing from Amazon. They're really comfy. It just makes sure you're not like exposing yourself when you're wearing a white skirt. So those will be linked as well. But this feels like really nice, lighter medium weight linen. You know, sometimes you get linen and it's just super thin and you can tell it's kind of like, cheap a little bit but this is like a pretty nice weight linen and i think i'll definitely get a ton of use out of it even as it gets a little bit colder if you're ever curious about what like the refill looks like you can take it out the shade actually looks like it might be really nice almost looks like olivey um i hope this isn't too light because that would be annoying whoa look at that undertone this is like a very very neutral almost olivey fair shade i'm so excited for this oh my god this looks like it's gonna be a amazing match. Like it almost has that grayness to it, which if you have like olive skin, you'll kind of know like that's definitely a good thing to have just like this grayness because then it doesn't lean too warm or pink or peach. It's just like neutral olivey. I forgot to wet my sponge. I'll be right back. Yes, the shade. I don't think I've ever found like a better match for my actual skin tone. We will see once it's blended out. 
Um, but anyway, this is a chatty video. I feel like I'm just distracted by this foundation right now. But I just wanted to like do makeup and talk about things in general. So first off, kind of just what I've been feeling lately in terms of like this channel and social media and social media in general is just my like discontent with short form content and like feeling like if you're not producing short form content you have no chance of anything on any social media platform and I was like fine with it on Instagram you know they're trying to be like TikTok and now with YouTube shorts I've just noticed there's been a huge change in the YouTube algorithm I mean you probably notice it on people's channels but like my videos and I just noticed everyone else's videos as well are just getting far less views than they usually do and you know it's not always about views I really think like quality of content and value is so important but the thing is when you post a video like a long content video and it doesn't get a lot of views you feel like discouraged and then you'll post a short and it'll get a lot of views and then that sort of encourages you more to create short form content even if you may not like it which is kind of how I'm feeling right now. I totally forgot to put the primer on I was going to use today because I got too excited. I was going to use the Euphoria pregame protective primer because I've been trying this out but whatever. I might have been slightly wrong about this shade. It definitely matches me pretty well. I just would prefer like a hint more of warmth but I think we could warm it up. So aside from just being a creator of content and just being a consumer of content I personally find short form content, it is so addicting, especially for my type of brain. I have ADHD, if you don't know that already, I don't think I've ever shared that. But that type of like short, quick burst of dopamine is like, I just will get lost on these apps for too long and I see absolute no benefit to it. I don't feel like I'm getting any like real value or connection from it. It doesn't improve my mental health, it doesn't improve anything in my life. So recently I've just been, I've literally like deleted Instagram off my phone. I do still go on it and occasionally post, but I've just had to do that to stop the cycle of like going on reels all day. And then now YouTube has shorts and just literally every app nowadays is short form content. Personally, I don't have the TikTok app for the same reasons. I have an account, I've posted maybe under 10 TikToks a while ago and I just don't participate in TikTok because for the same reason it's just not good for me in the long run and I don't really see a lot of like value in it it's so fleeting it's so I feel like it also drives sort of overconsumption of products especially in the makeup community it's always about the next viral product and the next big hit so you go out and buy this one product and then you use it once and then it's on to the next thing and I'm not really into that type of like reviews like I like to really describe the textures and how it's going to work with your skin type and how it's going to fit into your routine and your lifestyle and making sure this is like a good purchase because you know like don't waste your money on stuff that's not going to work for you I feel like that's the point of watching YouTube videos is to learn something ultimately it's also really overstimulating and fatiguing for me I noticed a huge difference in like how I feel when I do consume short form content on the regular and when I'm kind of trying to avoid it um, I do have a lot of fatigue in general and I think just avoiding that definitely at least helps a little bit I'd love to know your experiences with short form content if you feel like you do enjoy it and get value from it or you generally find it like overstimulating, fatiguing and just like like if I were to describe short form content like that's kind of the motion it's just like it frazzles my brain literally it just i can't process it taking the honest beauty concealer now for spot concealing don't love this for under the eyes spots i do like it though so um in general just being like a content creator on youtube it's discouraging but also like i'm just more inspired to bring more value to my content and like connection because i just love throwing on a longer youtube video and like just getting ready with that person or doing like some sort of like that would be boring task and making it like a little bit more fun and just actually learning things i think it's super fun and it's like a great benefit of social media especially youtube i don't think long form youtube content is going anywhere because it's really the only platform that offers it but i am like frustrated with 
just like everything surrounding short form content and feeling like I have to create it because you know if I did create a lot of short form content I'd probably make more money get more like opportunities and like it's kind of a little bit of a sacrifice but it's also just as fatiguing for me to make it as it is to consume it I just can't even describe it it's so time consuming I just much prefer sitting here talking to you and doing makeup it just feels way more connected and it's more of something that I'm passionate about doing versus like these quick viral type like videos that I don't feel like provide immense value as much as a full long video would I'm not saying that like all long videos <laughs> are valuable or like educational but um i've definitely been preferring them they're better for me overall i would love to know your thoughts below like what kind of videos do you like watching i had to put my hair back it was just so annoying this is the persona bubble blush stick so for the foundation shade like it definitely is a pretty good match um we'll have to see when it like sets down but I think it's definitely better than the one I originally purchased. Before we move on, I'm definitely gonna do more videos like this. So if you have any questions for me, I would love to do like a Q&A type video. So let me know any questions you have below. Go off in the comments. I will be sure to include them in my next chatty video. But moving on to powder, I have the Laura Mercier like ultra blur version we're gonna use today. Don't love this for under the eyes, but I do really enjoy it for the face. I'm gonna use it for both. So while we're sort of on the topic of fatigue as well, I feel like creating short form content is more fatiguing for my body. And I haven't done a video about this. Again, it's something I've been like meaning to talk about and then it just gets pushed into the back of my brain and forgotten about, which is trying to like help my brain with keeping ideas at the forefront and actually executing on them. It's a big thing for me but it is definitely like harder on my body and my brain like i do have chronic fatigue and i made a video about my health i think like a year ago maybe almost two years now about like my stomach problems and it was kind of like oh like i found the solution like i'm feeling better which is totally like i mean i am feeling generally better than that video like i am feeling better and made some progress but it is much more complicated and chronic than i originally thought which like i mentioned needs to be a whole nother video because it's just so much to talk about um but yeah generally when i am consuming short form content i feel shittier and when i already sort of feel shitty on most days it definitely doesn't help if you do want a full health update i have Lots of stuff to talk about. I've been putting it off because I'm like, oh, wait until I get this test done or I'll wait until this happens. But let me know if you want an update because there's definitely a lot to talk about. And, you know, living with a chronic illness is just like a big learning curve with like creating content, living life just in general. I feel like a lot of people also struggle with like chronic illness and issues like that. And it just like feels nice to hear someone else talk about it as well next i'm taking this new make beauty bronzer this is so good skin mimetic micro suede bronzer in lunar shades warm but it looks really natural on my skin still so yeah in general just like i'm trying to define not define i'm trying to like figure out my place on youtube a little bit more and like what kind of stuff i want to make and more of like the impact or value that i want to ring versus like just trying to get views or trying to create like all this short form content um which like would be probably more exposure and like beneficial to me but i don't think it's like worth the sacrifice of like that much fatigue or just like my values you know i'd also love to know if you would be interested and me like branching out in my content a little bit more because it's like a lot of videos I want to try making because I really love fashion as well more of like slow fashion capsule wardrobe like long term finding your personal style like finding pieces and curating a wardrobe that's going to work for you and your body type in the long run 
So I've just been like really into that. Like I'm really into color analysis and like the Kibbe body types and what is like the Kibbe essences. I don't think that's Kibbe, but like style essences. I think that's just all really interesting. Here I am wearing black, even though it's not a great color for me. But yeah, definitely let me know. I did share like that skirt I got in the beginning of the video. Let me know if you want more stuff like that. Obviously it'll be like much nicer than just like randomly showing you things. Like I'll do try-ons or maybe like fall essentials. Like I definitely have a lot of ideas like that. I don't necessarily know if I have the space to create like really nice outfit videos, but I think it's worth a try. So the Laura Mercier powder does have like a little bit of a yellow tint to it. So with that foundation, like I think it actually works pretty well. Tikimi Han Cosmetics Baby Pink Blush. This is the old packaging. I just love the shade of blush. It looks so good on my skin but i'm not surprised it's like this super dusty cool tone pink like it really looks so similar to my natural flush but with like a little bit more brightness i feel like this video is so sporadic forgive me but that's just like my brain right now hourglass ambient lighting powder another thing with short form content is i feel like some things just can't be summed up into that short of a video like there's just some things that you need a full video for so it's just really hard to like stay inspired with ideas because when i'm coming up with like youtube video ideas it's like a little bit more elaborate and thoughtful and like when i'm making reels it's just like I don't know, it's much more simple and like i don't feel like it's as creative for me personally like i'm sure there's a lot of people who like love short form content and like that's their thing there's tons of people who are doing it right now, but like, I don't know. Am I just like being old saying I don't like short form content? But it's I've just seen such a negative impact on me in all facets when I am participating in it. I mean, I still do. Not to say I won't make another like reel or Instagram short ever again. I definitely will. But in terms of like consuming it regularly, lowering that definitely helpful. I kind of ran out of things to talk about and my makeup is not done. So I guess we will just continue talking about the health stuff because why not? I don't really know where to start. But if you have seen that video, you know I had like a bunch of stomach problems, which I still do. Like I have stomach problems chronically and they're not like drastically better than they were when I filmed that. Um, I did have SIBO. I probably still do have SIBO. I've just tried almost everything for it and I just kind of like keep relapsing. Um, not really re relapsing, but not able to kill all the bacteria and also keep it away. So we're kind of just trying to figure out why that's happening. Obviously there's more things at play and I have tons of other symptoms too. Um, so I do have symptoms. I'm not officially diagnosed because they're just like, I don't know what you test for, but I've been treated for and still treating for mast cell activation syndrome, which if you're not familiar with, I feel like a good example is if you get a bee sting, your mast cells, which are all over your body, so it's a really like multi-organ, multi-systematic type of like condition. So it can show up anywhere in like all different parts of your body. So if you were to get a bee sting, your mast cells are what are responsible for releasing histamine and other inflammatory chemicals, which at the time are helpful for your body because it creates inflammation where you got the bee sting. So say like any bacteria or the, you know, bee venom, do bees have venom? But anyway, any like foreign thing that would get into your body because of that inflammation, it's not able to like sort of spread as quickly. So it's a really good protective measure for your body. But what happens is when you have mast cell activation is your mast cells are constantly overreacting to things that are seen as threats that are not necessarily threats to you. And like I said, mast cells are throughout your entire body. So I feel like for me, it's specifically like my digestive tract. I have a lot of issues with that. And also um, I have issues with my throat. But honestly, one of the biggest things that has helped me this whole time with my symptoms is just taking like 24 hours your tech or like any antihistamine. Because when I don't take an antihistamine, it's really interesting to describe 
but it's like I have like a lot of adrenaline in my body so it's like I have like that very anxious feeling even though it's not like actual anxiety it's just like my body feels that way and then like my brain will follow but when I am taking Zyrtec I don't get that feeling so I definitely have problems with just excess histamine and my mast cells releasing a lot of stuff so just like general inflammation that affects a lot of other parts of my body as well and that definitely goes into my fatigue for sure I'm also taking chromalin sodium which is a mast cell inhibitor I'm taking it for a couple months now which is uh, pretty helpful not like a huge difference but I do feel like uh, it's improved my quality of life a little bit sorry I'm just so hot um, but yeah obviously that's kind of just what we've landed on for now I have IBS too but that's not really like a it's just such a general diagnosis like I'm not really looking for diagnoses for just the diagnosis sake because they're usually like useless to have a diagnosis it's more of like you're able to find out like different medications that may help you uh, but just like ruling other things out the typical things for mast cell activation have been helping me a lot but in general just like avoiding my triggers improve my quality of life because I'm just not having reactions like I haven't had a really bad reaction in quite a while which is like a good milestone I feel like um but oh my god one of my biggest triggers scented laundry detergent like if I even get a whiff of it I'm so sensitive to it it gives me the worst reaction like I've ever had to anything one time I went to an Airbnb it was actually last year on my birthday and I had just showered and then just like sitting there watching TV and then just like my heart was racing so nauseous my whole body is like heat flash like I'm getting itchy it's literally the worst experience of my entire life I would say is when I have those types of reactions and I was like well, like why am I reacting like this and then I realized I used their towels and they must have used a scented laundry detergent um, I didn't like particularly smell it on the towels, but even if they're just washed in it, like I reacted so horribly and I was also like still taking um, Zyrtec. So that's just like a reaction on top of already having an antihistamine sort of controlling it. Um, so yeah, that and like fra certain fragrances and perfumes are some of the worst. So I really feel for people who have like severe allergies to fragrances because it's almost like it's such a burden almost and unavoidable like you go out into public someone walks by you you get a big whiff of perfume if they're wearing a lot like that happens to me all the time and it's just like well like what are you supposed to do not go out in public it's just literally everywhere you go to a hotel they use fragrance stuff you go to an airbnb they use fragrance stuff you go to someone's house they're burning a candle it's just like a very hard thing to control which is frustrating but yeah it's like what else can you really do besides avoid it the best you can i was just doing some eyeshadow from the pyt day to night palette i don't think they have this because this is the old one but they do have some palettes now i also have a new fit glow beauty this is the plant protein brow gel Ooh, what shade is this true blonde okay usually like not a huge fan of these fibrous brow gels but i was down to give it a try it's a little bit dark oh it's a bit warm definitely makes your brows look very <laughs> this shade is so off <laughs> it definitely makes your brows look more defined i just hate when this happens just that's not a good blonde shade in my opinion well i guess we'll see if we can fix that later <laughs> probably not but i'm gonna go in with this house labs this was on amazon because they're having like a big sale this is just one of their liquid shadows in the shade glam attack i think oh no that's the name of the product and this is blue jean dream which is like a more sheer glittery blue just gonna throw it on so besides the mast cell things i also have just like chronic pain in general more specifically in my shoulders and joints 
which I did just start going to physical therapy for those because uh, my shoulders are hypermobile, so which means they just like are overly flexible, which is not good because it makes your joints unstable and just like prone to irritating the nerves because I do have like a lot of nerve pain too in my shoulders if I don't like be careful with them. Um, so there's that. And then I also have a test coming up for something called POTS. I don't know like the exact um, description of that abbreviation, but I do know uh, what it is just to like briefly describe it. Let me finish this. These brows, like I hate this look right now. I can't. Um, so anyway, it's an automatic, autom, automatic, I can never say that word, um, nervous system sort of disorder. So my symptoms are when I stand up, I get like super dizzy. I have never fainted. Um, some people do faint who have it, other people don't faint. But if you just, if you get up, you get really dizzy and lightheaded and sometimes just start to like black out. If I get up really quickly, I will black out. So, but now that I know to like get up slower, um, I can do pretty good. Another thing is, it's really interesting. Stairs and inclines are very hard for me. Like it's not that I don't have the cardiovascular endurance for it because I could ride a bike for a really long time on like a flat surface but going up the stairs is like I can't even describe how hard it is it's really interesting it's like I'm like triple my weight like trying to get my body up the stairs and it's common in POTS because it's basically a failure of like it's not a failure it's just your body's having a harder time getting your blood from your feet to your head so you're just not getting like enough blood to your brain so also when i'm standing up i get like a super fast heart rate same with going upstairs or inclines um i just get really tired easily as well and the heat even right now is like a huge trigger for me i cannot be out in the heat for like long periods of time because that also makes it harder for your heart to bring your blood from your feet to your brain so it's just like another layer of that and it's just like not a good time and I get a lot of flushing as well. I'm flushed right now. I don't know what to do for these brows. I'm gonna try to like wipe it off, I guess. Um, but yeah, anyway, I do have a test for that in end of September actually, so I will let you know the results. The thing with that is if I do have that, there's like no, it's not like something you can cure. It's just like lifestyle modifications that you can make that I already have made. And then maybe like possibly trying a new medication, but it's kind of just like either diagnosing it or ruling it out because I do have the symptoms of it. And that's not all folks. I do also have uh, esophageal dysmotility, AKA I have difficulty swallowing, which started around the same time as my stomach problems. I just like thought it would go away, but it has not. So, I have problems swallowing both liquids and food, and it's more of like a, seems to be like more of a muscular thing. I do have testing for that coming up in October, so a lot of tests going on. But like I have trouble initiating the swallow, which is usually more um, like neuromuscular versus it being like your bottom of your esophagus dysfunctioning, um, which is interesting and it's not fun and it really sucks but i am able to eat most solids which is you know there's always something to be grateful for like at least i can eat for the most part and like not be choking um there's like some modifications that i have to make like i just can't have really dry things avoiding my triggers for sure and it just takes me a lot longer to eat and drink so i'm trying to figure that out as well there's just like so many things happening um, but yeah, there's just a lot and there's no like, I feel like I'm waiting for like something to like tie them all together. I definitely believe that, you know, everything in your body is pretty connected. So we will see what's happening with that once I get all my tests done. There's like a lot to process and deal with, but like it's been a while now. I feel like I'm pretty good at it now. At first, it was definitely like a struggle because it was just frustrating, like what's going on. But now I kind of know the rhyme or reason for most things. And um, it's kind of weird, like, 
be like, oh, you're young, like, best health of your life. And it's like, not really. <laughs> like, more of like the worst health I've experienced yet. But still trying to enjoy it. And like, again, like, I'm still grateful that I can like go for a walk and eat food. And I feel like if you have good health, like, anyone who has like chronic illnesses or anything they always say this is good health is just like don't take it for granted because it's so true like you don't know how good you have it until you don't and then you're like wow like without that basis of good health like nothing else in your life like aligned well like you, that's always the number one thing without good health you can't do anything else so yeah that was kind of the health talk i really dislike this look but we're just gonna keep going and you know, whatever. That's life. I'm gonna use the Maybelline Sky High Mascara. Another thing you'd actually see right now, my ear is super red. Um, when I'm flushing, usually both my ears, they get super red and like hot, um, which I have no idea why they do that. I guess just part of flushing. That happens to me all the freaking time. But I hope I like explained everything relatively well. I'll definitely do another video to explain things more because it's like, a lot of information and I just tried to give you like just a general overview of stuff so um yeah I'm not a doctor so like don't listen to anything I have to say in terms of medical stuff uh definitely do your own research talk to a doctor but this has just been my experience honestly no matter how bad eye look or makeup look is doesn't mascara just make everything so much better Oh, also on the topic of like my swallowing issues, I definitely also have like just issues with my speech as well. Like just doing this video, like it's pretty hard on my throat. I don't know if you can even like hear it in my voice, but yeah, I'm guessing I'll probably like after my testing probably need some sort of like speech therapy to help my swallowing muscles and also my speech. But let's move on to lip liner. I know this was a lot and I was not expecting this video to go in this direction. But that's kind of the nature of chatty videos, I guess. We're getting all into the nitty gritty, but I also feel like childhood trauma literally messed up my nervous systems so freaking bad. And I had to do, I'm still doing like so much work to like reverse that. It's just, I feel like that's also probably connected to all my health issues. I just have a feeling that it is because, you know, if you just think about it, like obviously there's science and studies behind this as well. There's also really good books. Um, about it if you're interested i'll link some from amazon but if you're like constantly dysregulated in a fight or flight state growing up when your brain is developing it just adopts that as a protective measure and it does it all the time so you know when traumatized children grow up into adults then you have this brain that's like literally always on the fritz and always overreacting just like my body is overreacting to everything um, to try to protect itself because that's what it had to do to survive as a child but now it's actually very harmful and you kind of have to like try to get out of that so yeah really spilling everything today so many things I could do like full videos about um, but parents please stop traumatizing your children because it's not just like oh yeah and you're traumatized it's like no like it fucks them up for a really long time i usually don't swear but i feel like it's just necessary honestly comment whatever the heck you want to talk about below I'm just doing like little freckles with this i don't know if i'm gonna do anything else with this look i'm kind of just like annoyed with it oh this was the mac i know this isn't cruelty free but like the shade viva glam 2 satin i know it's like old and like classic but this shade is just one of my favorite nudes. I have one in my purse and I just bought one for my vanity so I could have it. It's just perfect. I'm so hot. I need to cool off. But that was my rambly get ready with me. I will link all the products in the description below. We did some mediocre makeup. Um, I'm not really sure about this Fit Glow eyebrow gel just because like I don't, I wasn't able to test the formula because the shade was just not right for me. Um, new things that I tried, really loving the Make Beauty bronzer, really happy with this new shade of the RMS Beauty one, might be a little light, but we'll end up seeing, but I hope you enjoyed this and found it 
enjoyable to watch and yeah like i mentioned feel free to leave me questions below for my next video or just drop a comment about anything you feel like you want to because you know it's a safe open space here can't guarantee that the comments will be a safe space but they usually are hopefully they will be um, but thank you all for tuning in and i will see you in my next video bye